We have so many participants. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the webinar slot today evening. I'm Dr. Uma from the Instructional and Digital Learning Division here. Now, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box in your WebEx control panel. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we'll also have time for questions at the end. For those of you who have answered the feedback form after watching the previous sessions, please, continuing, uh, please continue doing so uh, for all the subsequent sessions as your feedback and reflection are important and valuable to us. Ladies and gentlemen, carrying out an online class is easier said than done. Students continue to grapple with capped data plans, slow internet connection, as well as limited basic technology devices. Now, realizing the common challenges students face while studying at home, today's presenter will share with us her tips on delivering lessons using low data consumption messenger applications such as WhatsApp and Telegram. Not all students can readily access learning content or resources such as videos due to poor internet speed in their areas. However, we believe most students are equipped with at least smartphones with WhatsApp and Telegram applications. So it makes sense to deliver lessons using these tools that students are already familiar with and they should be able to receive the lessons even with poor internet connection. Today, we have Dr. Siti Rosmina Magderos from Polytechnic Banting to share her tips on how she conducts lessons for students with low bandwidth. Dr. Siti Rosmina received her bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, computer technology from University Technology Malaysia, master's in education from University Technology Malaysia, and obtained her PhD in instructional technology from University Pendidikan Sultan Idris. Her current research interests are in the fields of educational technology, programming, visualization, and Internet of Things. She has also been awarded the Excellent Service Award three times in 2002, 2009, and 2017. And she was also the runner-up for the e-micro content competition under the animation category for CDOS Inspiring Learning Awards IDOLA 2017. Dr. Siti Rosmina, began her career at Polytechnic Sultan Salahuddin Abdul Aziz Shah in 1999. In 2011, she went to further her PhD. In 2015, she began working at Polytechnic Padikson. And since 2017, she has been attached to the Aircraft Maintenance Department at Polytechnic Banting Slango. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Dr. Siti Rosmina to start her knowledge sharing session on effective teaching and learning for low bandwidth audiences using WhatsApp and Telegram. Dr. Siti Rosmina, the floor is on you. All right, thank you, Dr. Uma. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon for all audience. Uh, first of all, I would like to yeah, uh, thank you very much to the IPD for giving me an opportunity to share a little bit experience uh, that I'm using, how I'm using a WhatsApp uh, to deliver my uh, learning content. Uh, since last semester, saya dah mula guna because um, kita selalu ada tugas-tugas ad hoc yang perlu disiapkan. Jadi uh, sebagai satu solusi untuk kita uh, mengganti kelas, why not kita guna elemen teknologi untuk kita buat penggantian kelas. Okay, now uh, seperti kita tahu ya, uh, we know that seperti yang Dr. Umar uh, uh, brief tadi, WhatsApp dan Telegram ni, is, uh, uh, it is a smartphone application that commonly are using for social communication. Yeah? So kita bersocial, kita send, kita share, tak kira lah uh, image, video, uh, text kan? ataupun emoji icon kepada uh, pengguna WhatsApp which is with this, uh, what we call features in WhatsApp or Telegram, kita boleh gunakan uh, feature system ini untuk kita deliver a lecture pada kelas kita. Uh, that's why uh, saya ada menggunakan little bit. Saya rasa pagi tadi kalau saudara Ghanim share pagi tadi, ramai lecturer-lecturer kan yang menggunakan ciri-ciri uh, WhatsApp, especially WhatsApp. Yeah. 
uh, sharing tentang uh, learning content especially. Uh, so, memandangkan sekarang ini, um, kita memang dalam keadaan norma baru, new norm. Jadi kita perlu ubah pedagogi kita from face to face kepada online learning. Jadi saya yakin daripada minggu lepas BIPD share pelbagai aktiviti digital learning uh, dengan Google Meet, dengan uh, Google Classroom and then dapatkan uh, apa pendapat-pendapat uh, daripada expertise especially in uh, distance learning, online e-learning. So one of the technology yang kita boleh guna adalah menggunakan WhatsApp and Telegram. Okay, we know that uh, di Malaysia, isu tentang internet line tu adalah satu isu uh, yang kita rasa memang sukar kita nak laksanakan e-learning class uh, because of uh, maybe dari segi cuaca yang tak menentu ya yeah, menyebabkan broadband line kita tu jadi slow ataupun uh, not active sangat ya. Yeah. Jadi uh, bila kita nak menggunakan teknologi seperti video conferencing it require a large bandwidth. Ya, yeah, it require a large bandwidth. Jadi kalaulah uh, lecturer melaksanakan video conferencing ataupun any technology yang high end memang sukarlah pelajar-pelajar ni nak uh, join for the learning class. Uh, saya pun pernah ada pengalaman ya, uh, dakan saya di pejabat. Um, one of our students need to go up from house about 6 kilometers only to get the line. Jadi agak sukar pada dia bila nak join on the what we call synchronous learning. Ya, yeah, synchronous learning face to face tapi in, in dalam jarak jauh. So, uh, jadi di sini hopefully sharing saya tentang uh, bagaimana kita laksanakan PMP menggunakan WhatsApp dan Telegram harap membantulah kepada audience. Ya, yeah? okay. What to start? Apa yang kita perlu mulakan uh, untuk uh, what we need to prepare untuk kita start uh, plan menggunakan WhatsApp atau Telegram. First of course lah kita perlu ada WhatsApp app. Saya rasa majority rakyat Malaysia kalau ada smartphone je of course the first apps yang ada wajib WhatsApp or Facebook. Or this is the two part social media sangat popular dan depends on the umur. Uh, kalau yang uh, boomer-boomers tu WhatsApp, kalau yang muda-muda IG, Instagram, now the, the the latest one is TikTok lah. Ya, yeah? okay. Bila dah ada WhatsApp ni, of course kita nak buat kelas, kita buatlah a WhatsApp group. Pagi tadi saudara Ganim dah share kan how to create a WhatsApp group. Ya, yeah? the second one, okay. Bagi memudahkan kita melaksanakan uh, a learning process, Uh, it's preferable lah kalau boleh kita ada WhatsApp desktop atau Telegram desktop because easy to manage, mudah untuk kita menguruskan. Kalau kita menggunakan phone, kalau dapat phone yang kecil tu takut dia messy sewaktu proses pembelajaran tersebut. Ya, yeah. Yang ketiga adalah set clear ground rules. Memandangkan kita ni now nak fokus kepada uh, learning activity Uh, it's not macam sebelum ni Dalam grup kelas kita memang Saya rasa majoriti ramai pesara buat uh, WhatsApp group Tapi dalam tu mix Ada announcement Ada nota Pelbagai lah dalam tu Kan? Ada yang kita announce nama pelajar Tak hantar assignment Jadi dia messy Pelbagai maklumat tu bercampur uh, Since kita nak fokus online learning Why not kita create satu platform Through WhatsApp group yang khusus untuk Uh, sesi delivering a learning contact. Itu dia, uh, itu yang jadi objektif utamanya. Jadi bila kita nak uh, fokus kepada deliver, uh, delivering a learning contact, so kita kena make it a clear ground rules kepada student. Ya, yeah? dan seterusnya of course untuk mengajar apa-apa dalam konsep pedagogi we need to prepare a learning material, a strategy how to deliver uh, the learning content kepada Pelajar. So this is for basic step lah. Ya. Yeah? For prepare before we start our class. Ya. Yeah? Ataupun session. So next. Uh, now set the clear ground rules. For those yang first time menggunakan WhatsApp group. Of course dia nak inform kepada pelajar. Uh, the clear ground rules. So first time you can share lah dekat apa dekat WhatsApp platform ni. 
Ya, seperti saya tunjukkan video ini. Okay, that's why saya guna desktop, uh, easy to copy and paste. Ya, daripada kita nak menaik satu persatu, it takes time sebab masa sangat cepat kan. Alright, dan ataupun hmm, for this clear ground rules, ini pertama kali bolehlah kita letak di screen WhatsApp. Tapi kalau uh, untuk banyak kali remind student takkan nak copy paste, copy paste kan. So kita boleh settingkan dia dekat group info. Eh? Kita setting and put on the description here. Dalam WhatsApp, dalam group WhatsApp, there is a one area here description about the group. So you can put here di mana when uh, the user ataupun the members of the group dia buka kepada group setting dia akan nampak description of group. Whether you put the rules ataupun you boleh letak uh, tarikh, activity, your planning, pukul berapa nak buat kelas, pukul berapa nak buat assessment. Kan everything you can put in here. Ya yeah, dekat di uh, group description. Yeah. So student dah clear lah nampak in apa in meantime seterusnya dia akan nampak what is the uh, rules yang kita tetapkan the main point rules adalah um, kita perlu pastikan bahawa semasa kita deliver learning content jangan ada interruption contoh terbaik lah teacher very good nice no kita tak nak macam tu supaya kita tak nak ada uh, macam messy ataupun uh, dia interrupt learning tu dia akan mengganggu proses-proses delivering learning content kan that's we call uh, apa in a interruption ya yeah? alright this is the set ground uh, clear ground rule second one is the preparing the material ya yeah? preparing the material saya yakin majority of lecturer memang ada nota powerpoint ya yeah? memang ada nota powerpoint however Bila kita nak share nota ni, uh, powerpoint ni kepada pelajar sebelum ni just kita save as PDF dan kita share dalam WhatsApp group. Tapi now kita nak buat proses PMP. Kita nak buat proses PDP. Kita nak deliver content dalam powerpoint. Jadi bagi saya it's not suitable you just uh, save as PDF ataupun you export as PDF dan you share dengan harapan student boleh belajar sendiri. I don't think so. Dalam masa kita diperuntukkan dalam jadual waktu tu kan kita nak setting. So apa yang kita boleh buat adalah setiap slide ni kita boleh export dia kepada image. Ya, yeah, kepada image. So this is the technique, a simple technique bagaimana daripada PowerPoint ini kita exportkan setiap slide ini menjadi individual image. Ya. Yeah. Individual images, okay. Individual, individual images. So this is the example. So the first is click from menu file and choose export here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Click menu file, choose export. Then from here you choose like any folder yang you nak simpan. Set the folder name, image, video or any any folder supaya mudah untuk kita uh, mendapatkan maklumat tu. Then put the file name here. The file name here. Okay, let's say slide one. And then the file, oh sorry. The, yeah. Okay, the file format here. Uh, you can choose whether JPEG atau PNG lah. Lalu the popular file format untuk image adalah JPEG ataupun PNG. So choose this. Then there is two uh, pilihan, dua pilihan you can choose how you save your slide. Some yes. ada to only save the current slide satu sahaja. Macam ni saya tunjuk satu sahaja. The current slide means the current slide is this one yang berwarna merah ni kan. This is the current slide. It is selected. So you can save every slide. Katalah dari 200 slide, there will be 200 images. Yeah. So you can pilih lah. Choose which uh, pilihan. Yeah. Untuk you setting. And you can choose the 
size of your image. This is by default adalah 720 uh, with height 550 pixels. Yeah. Then click the button export. Then you got your one slide individually in image file type. This is the way. I think banyak dah yang share kat YouTube pun banyak boleh refer ya. Yeah? Alright, this is first. Prepare material. Saya galakkan you have your image. Slide tukar kepada image. Alright, next adalah of course. Nak mengajar with the modern way, kita banyak menggunakan view. Whether you creating your own video ataupun you using a YouTube, you download and using a uh, uh, download from YouTube the video ataupun the material that relate to our topic ataupun learning content. However, since we are using a low bandwidth social application, so kita galakkan penggunaan video yang mempunyai storage yang rendah. Dan satu lagi, dalam pembelajaran uh, menggunakan WhatsApp, digalakkan bila kita nak share video, even I think any technology tools, any technology tools, uh, kita tak galakkan you share video untuk jangka masa yang panjang. As example here, this is video okay, masa 8 minit for student to watch the video. Uh, dalam proses pembelajaran, supaya pelajar dapat catch up setiap setiap aktiviti pembelajaran ataupun konten pembelajaran it was advisable that kita setting atau set a video limit up to 3 minit 3 minit dah mencukupi so as lecturer kita kena kaji atau uh, kita kena study the video and kita kena trim the video supaya dia mengikuti kepada topik-topik ataupun uh, objective learning yang kita nak capai. Example ialah 8 minit for us, uh, saya, uh, saya rasa tidak berapa sesuai sebab kita nak satu lagi low bandwidth kena sikit-sikit eh small uh, storage capacity. Yang kedua kita nak supaya pelajar tu fokus apa yang akan dia um, uh, lihat tayangan video tu kita trim kepada certain time. Kalau boleh maksimum 3 minit. So example here this is a 8 minutes, 8 minutes. So apabila kita study video ni I want to I dah cut one part of the video to 2 minutes. About 2 24 2 minutes 24 second. However, dalam uh, penggunaan a low bandwidth, kita prefer any image atau video menggunakan storage yang rendah. Uh, melalui pembacaan saya uh, the suitable video storage capacity untuk kita share dengan pelajar adalah sorry adalah about below than 20 megabyte. Ya, yeah? below than 20 megabyte. Since this is kita dah cut to 2 minutes to uh, ikut suitable of the learning objective, uh, I want to make it the video tu is it, I want to make it uh, optimizing the video ni kepada uh, storage capacity yang lebih rendah. So there is one way yang saya gunakan which is I'm using uh, open source uh, apa, video editing atau video editor which we name as Clipchamp ataupun dekat Google keyword you can just type Clipchamp then we'll come out with Clipchamp utility. Yeah. So this is example how I optimize a 40 megabyte video, kita boleh optimisekan dia turun kepada less than 20 megabyte video. So, when you go to website, just type the Google keyword Clipchamp atau Clipchamp Utilities. Alright. You need first, kalau for, for first time user, you need to sign up. For easy sign up, actually you can directly sign up as, oh, using your Google account. It doesn't matter. Tak perlulah nak, nak sign up uh, nama baru apa semua. Just using directly guna Google account. Uh, macam ni contoh saya dah sign up. Jadi I will directly login. Yeah, saya klik butang login dan saya menggunakan Google account yang sedia ada. Dan just pilih je account Google yang saya dah ada. Then this is the interface for Clipchamp Utilities. 
there is two what we call activity yang kita boleh buat whether kalau tak uh, kalau your laptop tak ada video editor atau video yeah. recording you can use this facilities you boleh record the video ya yeah? tapi tak secanggih seperti the video facilities yang lain lah okay now my objective is to optimize my video size file size 40 megabyte tu to below than 20 so i will use this convert my video activity so from here saya uh, upload my video tadi yang saya telah trim kepada 22 megabyte. Okay, this is the video. So, this is how I setting the video. Setting for optimizing process. First, of course, the, the type of the material yang kita nak guna adalah pada mobile. So, I will choose mobile. Ya, yeah, kita akan guna untuk mobile. Then, the setting for resolution, okay. Since this is for low bandwidth, memanglah kita uh, nak harapkan uh, storage yang rendah, tak bolehlah ambil sampai HD type. Ya, yeah? so at least ambil yang medium type lah. Contoh 480 pixels ataupun resolution dia lah 480. Uh, tak sesuai untuk kita ambil resolution yang tinggi. Because it consume a storage capacity, ya. Yeah? Alright. And then the the format of course, format yang ringan adalah MP4 and automatic uh, dan kita nak the quality is low. Uh, di sini, it doesn't matter quality low, medium atau high. Sebab our main objective adalah kita nak bantu pelajar yang ada uh, line bandwidth yang rendah kan, internet. Jadi kita kena bagi something material yang rendah dia punya storage capacity. Because this is, the, the objective is nak bantu pelajar yang Uh, a low bandwidth internet problem. Ya. Yeah. Then bila you dah choose ya. Okay di sini. Uh, file video yang ini saya dah trim sendiri. Menggunakan video editor sendiri. However, Clipcam Utilities pun ada kemudahan untuk kita trim the video. Eh, You can, uh, siapa yang ada pengalaman uh, yang berada di desktop tu boleh cubalah. Clipcam Utilities boleh login ataupun register. Then you can. Uh, tukarkan kepada uh, bentuk video ataupun you click the edit video dan you akan dapat. Macam ni saya terus untuk buat optimizing. Ya. Yeah. So I put this, uh, click the start button. Okay now the process. Ini saya dah setting a video bagi cepat sebab ikutkan uh, ikutkan kepada wifi coverage sebenarnya it takes time jugalah. Ya. Yeah. So make it a fast, uh, make it a fast moving dalam uh, video editing. So kita tunggu. Alright, done 100% dan di sini from my, the original file 42 MB uh, boleh convert kepada 10 MB only. And berdasarkan quality video boleh lagi ditayangkan. Boleh lagi ditayangkan. So, whether you want upload and share directly to Facebook or Google Drive kat sini ataupun saya just save directly because I want to put in my folder. Yeah, this is the process of uh, how uh, a technique how we can optimizing a storage for video. Alright, takat ni okay ya? Eh? Tak ada masalah? Ada soalan? Ah, uh, setakat ni tak ada soalan. Ah, uh, interesting, very interesting. Hmm. Okay, so teruskan doktor. Alright, this is ah uh, selain daripada image ataupun ah uh, video, I think satu lagi material yang kita kena perlu, perlu prepare adalah audio. Ya, yeah, sebab kita dah uh, convert all the PowerPoint slide tu kepada single image. Of course, need an explanation. There is two type of explanation. Whether you ready with the audio file, ataupun you can guna audio features dalam WhatsApp or Telegram. Ya, yeah? okay. I think kat sini saya tak tunjukkan sebab uh, even pada kita punya gadget or our laptop ada voice recorder. Boleh je guna voice recorder. Cuma nak dapatkan a very good sound everything of course lah kena labu lah kalau tidak just directly uh, record your voice uh, for the uh, learning content explanation. So this is three or four types material lah you need to ready. Uh, dan saya rasa the key content macam mana kita nak deliver effective 
uh, deliver effectively uh, our learning to dalam um, penggunaan WhatsApp atau Telegram adalah the material because uh, low bandwidth kan uh, masalah internet kan jadi kita kena gunakan material-material yang ringan this is the key ah uh, yeah so next adalah the structure oh sorry so the structure here I think mana-mana pun pedagogi ataupun any teaching and learning process dia mesti ada satu structure yang sama sahaja. Tak kira lah you guna video tool ataupun you guna uh, apa what we call e-learning platform everything. Ya yeah, semuanya sama. Ya yeah, for me first kita perlu ada learning outcome overview. Saya rasa semua even our course outline pun dah ada semua perkara ini. Kan? Ya. Yeah. Uh, learning outcome overview, bagi tahu pelajar what is our, your learning objective, apa you aim dan kedua you share your learning content. Ah, kat sini lah kita share yang our image tadi yang kita convert daripada powerpoint kepada uh, image ataupun text atau some, some uh, kalau rasa suara tu tak sedap you nak prepare text kan. You just prepare the text and share with the image ataupun ready ke with audio ataupun video. This is the learning content di mana this is the material, empat of the material element atau kita panggil multimedia element untuk kita share dengan pelajar. Okay, aktiviti yang penting adalah cognitive engagement. This is yang sangat penting. Selain daripada kita prepare learning content, cognitive engagement sebab tujuan kita, kita nak deliver content dan the student can Uh, understand apa yang kita nak sampaikan. So bila kita nak pastikan student tu faham apa yang disampaikan, of course lah kena ada activity. Ya, yeah. then untuk pastikan student ni faham ke tak faham ke, so we can do a simple assessment ataupun kita panggil formative assessment. Ya, yeah. contoh buat simple quiz ke, macam-macam uh, lah you can share buat link kahut kat situ ke, yeah. dalam whatsapp and everything. Dan okay finally Reflection. Reflection ni student feedback ni something um, saya rasa boleh share, a student boleh share through audio, uh, uh, WhatsApp audio ataupun telegram audio untuk certain-certain learning outcome. Apa masalah yang dihadapi. Eh? Uh, kita boleh give time for them to share. Eh? Apa masalah yang dihadapi supaya kita sama-sama boleh improve apa yang kita boleh bantu pelajar. So this is the basically the step one until step five sama sahaja yeah, for me. Yeah. Uh, sebab for uh, untuk WhatsApp tu yang penting yang tadi saya cakap lah how to prepare the material yeah, untuk low bandwidth uh, content. So this is example uh, learning lah. Bila kita nak buat sesuatu activity perlulah ada perancangan, plan. Kan? So contoh for this activity nak buat WhatsApp, kita nak make it the delivery of learning content tu smooth. Kan? Tak teragak-agak, oh lepas ni nak share apa? Lepas tu nak buat teks apa? Oh video ni tak tahu nak cakap apa? Better kita plan. Supaya during the uh, schedule yang ditetapkan untuk kita, smoothly kita boleh deliver. Ya, yeah, contoh of course kita buat chapter kita nak cover. Ya, yeah, the topic, what type of topic yang kita nak cover from the main chapter and what is the learning outcome yang kita nak cover. Basically, uh, from my reading, dalam um, delivering an online content, uh, it preferably, uh, preferably contoh seperti WhatsApp ni sebenarnya it make it dalam satu segmen ke satu segmen kita make it dalam 15 minutes to 20 minutes cukup. For first segment, katalah dalam jadual waktu diberi 2 hours. Betul tak? So the 15 segment, what is the hour learning content kita plan. Then take 5. Biasalah take 5 dulu, take 10 kan? Bagi rest our mind. Then we plan for the next segment. So kita kena plan segment by segment menggunakan learning structure yang kita buat ni. Jadi harap dengan cara itu pelajar boleh terima bahan-bahan pembelajaran tu dengan mudah. Dan kita elakkan satu konsep kita panggil uh, cognitive load. Cognitive load maksudnya sesuatu yang pelajar sukar nak terima informasi uh, because of macam-macam disruptive. You know lah duduk rumah macam-macam tiba-tiba ada kunci lalu lah kan. Tiba-tiba bunyi adik menangis lah ada banyak disruption. Jadi untuk bantu pelajar ni kita tak boleh continuously one hour bla 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 cakap buat aktiviti. Sukar untuk mereka. Jadi as lecturer we need to plan segment ataupun session ataupun a segment by segment. So this is an example for one segment about 15 minutes. Ya. Yeah? 
sebab dia jadual waktu kita uh, allocate for 2 hours kan. So kita set kan uh, learning outcome tu clearly dalam 15 minit. Contoh di termain 3 classification of kita aim, pelajar ni tahu 3 types of the aircraft instrument or so on. Yeah. So this is example the activity element-element yang seperti saya nyatakan hmm. tadi. Yeah, this is the first element. So we giving an introduction. Saya rasa semua lecturer tahu the way uh, apa uh, proses utama adalah bagaimana kita nak bagikan minda pelajar ni ready what learning content we need to deliver. Of course lah, the introduction ataupun kita panggil dulu set induksi. Pelbagai terminologi yang kita guna. And then uh, this is my idea lah. I think kalau ada orang audience lain yang boleh share a better what we call teaching and learning structure ni boleh lah kalau boleh share. This is a simple idea lah. Contoh the activity. What activity kita nak buat? What material untuk setiap activity kita nak buat? Sebab kita nak make it delivering content tu smooth kan? And then katalah uh, perlukan text. What type of text yang kita nak buat? Eh, contoh this one, uh, aircraft instrument, uh, this is the material that I want to use dan this is the sebab saya nak tunjuk gambar dengan saya nak buat penerangan melalui teks. So I ready the text. Yeah, I'm ready the text. Contoh yang kedua image plus audio, what type of the audio yang kita nak guna. Sebenarnya it preferable kalau you letakkan uh, what we call the file name. Macam ni saya tertinggal tau kalau boleh letak file name supaya kita mudah kesan file apa yang kita nak share dengan pelajar dan seterusnya. So activity learning content dan seterusnya yang penting dalam satu atau dua sharing ya video ataupun image saya galakkan kita buat cognitive engagement. Contoh kita buat simple task untuk dia. Ya, yeah, simple task dan continue with learning content dan this is assessment you can give macam ni sebab mm, kita tak nak uh, sebab because of objective low bandwidth just simple text lah dalam bentuk soalan objektif. Tujuannya bukanlah kita nak uh, kita nak pastikan apa kita nak macam uh, kita nak just pastikan pelajar ni faham ke tak faham atau follow the track. Eh follow the track according to the learning outcome. And the final one is the reflection. Student share dia orang punya struggle okay untuk part yang ini saya susah nak faham which part of the learning outcome kita kena directly minta pelajar inform. So just use a uh, audio website. Uh, that's all lah the example of the learning content. So this is the example yang saya boleh share. So selain daripada tu ada soalan tak? Sebab lepas ni saya nak share how we use a WhatsApp punya uh, what we call uh, desktop ataupun telegram. Kita belajar the, the what we call the features of WhatsApp or telegram. Uh, no question so far. Uh, you, you may proceed, Dr. Rose. I think that everybody is really engaged with your presentation. So, please proceed to the next segment. Alright, okay. Ada masa berapa lama lagi? 15 minit? You have another half an hour. Oh, lama. Sekejap ni terah. <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, so, saya rasa semua dah ada WhatsApp ataupun Telegram kan? Okay, alright. Uh, Now, antara WhatsApp and Telegram. Uh, biasanya kita, community kita are more preferable with WhatsApp. Ya, yeah? compact dan Telegram. Why? Sebab um, first, memang uh, the, the the social apps yang memang diperkenalkan mula-mula dulu early 2000 is WhatsApp. Ya, yeah? dan kita selesa menggunakan apps ini untuk berkomunikasi with our sibling, our parents, our close friend, everything. Kan? Kemudiannya baru didatangi oleh Telegram. Alright. Uh, dari segi ciri-ciri WhatsApp dengan Telegram seperti yang saudara Ghanim share pagi tadi WhatsApp ni kita boleh buat group, Telegram pun buat group. Tapi based on my observation, WhatsApp ni more uh, 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 concerning more kepada person apa what we call personal uh, social. Contoh message dengan pelajar, message dengan kawan-kawan, uh, parent, ibu bapa dan everything. Compact dan Telegram Uh, saya dapati dia banyak digunakan dalam bentuk digital marketing. Kan? Dia uh, banyak bentuk digital marketing because ciri-ciri uh, telegram tu sendiri yang uh, boleh ada members up to what I, I heard about 200, 200 members. Uh, 200,000 members or 100,000 members something like that compact dan uh, whatsapp. 
Ya, satu lagi antara WhatsApp dengan Telegram. Uh, WhatsApp ni dia boleh send the file up to 100 megabyte saja. Compact dan Telegram dia boleh send file about 1.5 gigabyte. Tapi sebab our objective nak bantu belajar yang ada low internet bandwidth. Jadi that's why saya tak rasa saya hanya buat demo antara WhatsApp banyak compact dan Telegram because uh, it doesn't matter about the uh, the 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 storage file yang kita boleh upload sebab our main objective boleh upload se rendah rendah image file ya yeah, atau video file. Ah uh, okay satu lagi uh, antara kebaikan utama Telegram compact dan WhatsApp WhatsApp ni dia dalam bentuk encrypted maksudnya bila kita nak hantar message we need to save our phone number. Betul tak? Compact dan Telegram tak perlu. Kenapa Telegram tak perlu? Sebab dia adalah what we call cloud messaging base. Kan? Contoh, let's say katalah tukar telefon. You tukar telefon atau telefon kena curi. So you free uh, you bila telefon kena curi ke atau uh, tu uh, you need download a new apps untuk WhatsApp dalam phone baru. Ya, yeah? ataupun telefon kena curi dapat SIM card baru pun dah kosong. You need to download new WhatsApp apps. Di mana bila you create WhatsApp baru, you akan dapati kosong sahaja. Sebab all the data before yang you simpan tu tak uh, before dalam SIM, dalam phone yang 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 you pakai sebelum tu dah hilang. Compact dan Telegram since dia adalah cloud messaging base, di cloud kan dekat atas awan tu. Bila you tukar phone ke, you tukar SIM ke, bila you register balik your telegram with the SIM number, you akan dapat balik. Ya, yeah? you akan dapat balik. That's why saya dapati kebanyakannya penggunaan telegram more kepada uh, digital marketing. Ya, yeah? makcik Tiah nak jual si lemak ke, dia add lah ramai-ramai. Makcik Tiah nak jual tudung ke, dia add ramai-ramai. Dia tunjuklah gambar-gambar sebab uh, data dalam telegram tu kekal. Ya, yeah, data dalam telegram tu kekal, compact dan whatsapp. Ya, yeah. uh, untuk telegram kita dapati there is two type of the telegram uh, nak create group. Pagi tadi, um, Ganim dah share macam mana nak create group dengan whatsapp. Ya, yeah. okay untuk telegram, bila kita nak create group, there is two type of group. Pertama group, satu lagi channel. Ya, yeah. group ni you nampak ada ikon gambar kan? Maksudnya ni sangat sesuai kalau kita nak make it a group dan ada two way communication. Ya, yeah. two way communication. Jadi saya rasa untuk kelas sesuai menggunakan group. Ya, yeah. telegram group. Compact dan channel nampak dia lebih kepada announcement, broadcasting, broadcast on the information. Ya, yeah. di mana it's only one way communication. Ya, yeah, one way communication. So di sini uh, memang waktu sesi pembelajaran kita nak one way communication tapi bila ada activity we need two way communication. That's why saya advise atau cadangkan kita menggunakan uh, telegram group. Ya, yeah? alright. Uh, itu yang antara ciri-ciri telegram yang saya faham lah. Ya, yeah? selain daripada tu um, WhatsApp dia kata up to 200 members compact dan uh, Telegram boleh ada members up to 200,000 members berapa ratus persen beza ya antara WhatsApp dengan Telegram dan uh, uh, kalau kita nak uh, menggunakan Telegram juga dekat Telegram search ni we can search any group sebab di cloud messaging eh contoh kita nak cari maklumat tentang educational pelbagai group educational keluar eh kita nak cari maklumat tentang IOT pelbagai group IOT keluar yang ini tak adalah pula kan dia tak detect any group boleh cari ya yeah? itu antara uh, kebaikan telegram compact dan whatsapp ya yeah? alright so seterusnya ada soalan ada uh, uh, Dr. Rose uh, ada soalan um, can you share your experiences for online assessment uh, using whatsapp or telegram using a Google form or quiz bot? Oh, ah, uh, yang itu saya tak share melalui WhatsApp sebab sebab saya memikirkan more kepada direct message kepada pelajar. Macam okay. quiz bot, ah, uh, what we call Google form, everything saya guna directly dengan mereka. Contoh masa kelas face to face sebab kita nak buat aktiviti tu more merrier. 
kan supaya student tak boring kalau whatsapp ni more directly apa yang saya nak sampaikan kan sebab uh, uh, saya cuba uh, buat tu uh, synchronizekan dengan penggunaan CDOS dalam CDOS tu saya letak even I embed the Padlet I embed the Google Form and everything Okay now kita nak setting buat kelas kan ya yeah, nak setting buat kelas of course uh, sekejap uh, alright this is lah tadi saya dah share the group rules and everything now kita nak start buat kelas seperti yang saya tunjukkan uh, the structure yang kita dah planning. Let's say I want to share about this chapter. Ya, yeah, this chapter kejap. Now. Oh, tak boleh minimize ya. Yeah. So, bila kita guna desktop, it easy to manage lah. Compact dan kita guna uh, smartphone. So, Macam biasa, bila kita nak deliver, macam mana dalam face to face, of course, kita akan bagi tahu today we, lo, we would like to learn chapter 3, just copy and paste here. And send. Kan, student clear, oh okay, now kita nak belajar tentang chapter 3. Ya, yeah. then what topic yang kita nak cover? Ya, yeah. what topic yang kita nak cover? So we just share here. Right? And then, okay, and the learning outcome. So this is the learning outcome. So student clear, yeah, apa yang mereka nak belajar. Then we start with the activity, introduction. So our my plan, I nak cerita tentang aircraft instrument, di mana material adalah slide one. So from the slide one, just take here. Okay, this is my folder. Saya dah setting that four type of folder differently supaya easy to catch what type of file saya nak share. So this is example is slide one. Yeah, then this is for image. So, so this is the slide one. Just bring here. Macam tu lah. Ataupun you upload lah. Yeah, just bring here. Alright, then send. So, student nak belajar tentang ni lah. Yeah. Then, so my plan with this first slide, I will uh, apa uh, setting a text. Apa text yang saya nak terangkan kepada tu? Okay, now. Bila kita share uh, dalam online learning, agak berbeza dengan PowerPoint sedia ada, biasanya PowerPoint kita more kepada text, compact dan image. Betul tak? Content PowerPoint. So, saya rasa kalau kita nak terangkan kepada pelajar, it's preferable you show the graphic atau image first. Supaya pelajar tengok, eh apa ni? Buat benda ni. Then, kita share the text ataupun audio lah. Apa yang kita nak share. Yeah. Then, sudah akan baca. Oh, oh sorry, ini sepatutnya tak ada lah. Eh, sepatutnya tak ada. Yeah. Kita share only the text dan student baca lah. Eh, alright. Bila saya dapat kita tersalah bawa nampak tak uh, kekurangan WhatsApp. Kekurangan WhatsApp di sini apabila tersalah teks kita tak boleh repair kecuali kita kena delete. Betul? Alright. Berbeza dengan Telegram, berbeza dengan Telegram, let's say you want to share your nota, katalah saya sharekan nota uh, uh, slide yang sama. Kan? Dan share then I copy the text eh, kalau yang ini termasuk ini ok termasuklah saya punya planning ni right nampak ada kesilapan we can kita boleh tak salah saya kita boleh edit sini saya tak dapat ok kita boleh edit kita just kalau di phone dia just klik uh, tekan je lama press je Kalau di desktop, you just klik butang kanan dan you edit. Eh, you edit, you tak nak yang ini. Yes. Mm -hmm. And ready. Dah cantik. Itu kelebihan telegram lah. Compact dan mm -hmm. eh? WhatsApp. Ya. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, so di sini, so kita masukkan activity ataupun you want to record. Ya, yeah? you want to record a audio, you can use record to audio. Mm -hmm. Ya. Yeah? 
Alright, hi class. Today we would like to learn about flight instrument system. Ha, macam tu. Alright, when recording satu lagi. Uh, saya galakkan maksimum you record about 30 second. Step by step. Jangan you cakap lama-lama satu jam. Sebab bila you uh, recording a video, uh, 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 audio, kalau dah lebih 30 second atau uh, lebih pada seminit, pelajar tu tertunggu-tunggu di, di rumah dia. Apa lecture ni buat kan? Sebab recording, recording dekat atas. So sedikit demi sedikit. When you record about 20 second atau 30 second, then you blast the first 30 second audio, then you start recording the second, student dah boleh dengar. Student dah boleh dengar your first uh, information related to this object. Yeah. Alright, next let's say you want to share a video. Yeah, you want to share a video. So, which file of the video. Yeah, katalah yang ini. Right, uh, part one, I think here. So you just share your video. Okay, dan kita bagi arahan lah untuk pelajar ya. Yeah? Alright, kita bagi arahan kepada pelajar uh, untuk uh, 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 lihat video tersebut dan maybe kita boleh bagi aktiviti. Biasanya bila kita share sesuatu perkara yang begini, better kita uh, complete with the activity. Because kat sini student dah watch a video. So maybe, okay, from the video above, the video that you have been watching. Uh, you have been watching. Please list three types of uh, flight instruments that working with keto tube. So, bila ada aktiviti, barulah pelajar tu ada objektif. Kenapa nak tengok video tersebut? Daripada yes. tengok video without guidance. We need yes. to guide them. Ha, saya rasa bukan WhatsApp je, mana-mana teknologi tools pun. We need yeah. to guide them. Yeah. Then, seterusnya, uh, aktiviti soalan. Okay, this is the thing plus one lah. Kalau you nak buat assessment. Yeah, kita ask the student nak buat assessment. Uh, just copy paste the simple question. Yeah, the simple question, kata like this is the assessment. Yeah, so kata, uh, kata kita nak buat simple quiz, just copy paste the question, minta pelajar, jawab. Okay, now, bila kita sharing content, seperti yang kita nyatakan pada ground rule, kita tak nak pelajar ganggu sewaktu kita sharing content kan? Because it's only a one-way communication. So, pada ketika ini, maybe kita nak elakkan pelajar tiba-tiba share Mencetak. ataupun uh, interrupt the class, okay. kita boleh set dulu, hmm, lupa lah kat mana ni. I think group info, uh, sekejap ya. Jadi kita setkan sebagai admin, saya lupa lah. I think, kat mana eh? Uh, group dia, dia ada setting kan jadi group admin. Admin only. Uh, yeah, admin, admin only boleh send message. Ya, yeah, admin only boleh send message. Ka, kalau dekat desktop ni jarang guna jadi tak boleh detect dekat mana. Ya, yeah, ataupun select message tak ada, tak ada, tak boleh jumpa. Tapi uh, boleh, mesti tak boleh tak pergi ke settings. Setting here. I think here. Yeah. So, uh, untuk group info ni. Yeah. Okay, kejap. Hmm, sini. This is only the group. This is the here. Oh, group setting here. Yes. Alright. Sini uh, group info. Sini the way kita send message sama ada only admin or all participants. Uh, so, uh, kalau delivering a learning content, saja tak nak ada interruption, kita set only admin can send a message. Yes. The activity melibatkan pelajar need to giving a feedback, we change the group setting to all participants can send the feedback. Yes. So lah. this will this will enable you to actually control your flow of your lesson as well yeah. as you do this. Yes. Yeah, betul. Betul. Itu antaranya lah. Uh, yang lain tu sama lah and then uh, kalau nak minta pelajar bagi refleksi just give the refleksi make sure bahawa uh, the the what we call the members uh, boleh bagi uh, feedback atau refleksi. Itu sajalah perkongsian saya uh, berkenaan bagaimana kita nak menggunakan whatsapp ataupun telegram uh, dalam sesi pembelajaran. The key point is your material make it a low material size 
your image and your video and the second key point adalah your structure make sure your structure tu sebab nak elakkan interruption ataupun gangguan dalam masa 2 jam yang diperuntukkan dalam jadual waktu you make it section by section you set a clear what we call clear learning outcome and what is the activity supaya activity tu boleh sampai ya yeah, boleh sampai kepada pelajar dan uh, pelajar can gain the knowledge from the activity Ya, yes, setakat itu sajalah perkongsian saya. Setakat ni ada soalan ke? Okey. Ada beberapa soalan. Um, Okey, uh, soalan daripada Nur Afifa Saharuddin. Adakah setting tu boleh buat dalam satu masa? Maksudnya kalau kita rancang 20 minit kita punya lecture, lepas tu kita setting balik untuk aktiviti. Boleh. Kita ha. boleh. Kita boleh setting promptly. Waktu ni nak setting boleh tukar je promptly. Dia tak perlu ambil masa. Okay. Boleh. Um, bila dah bagi soalan kepada pelajar, pelajar akan bagi feedback kat mana? Okay, contoh this question. Just uh, maybe kita set number soalan lah. Ataupun base year, kita letak Q1. Kan? Q1 which instrument, if this is objective, you can say katalah. Uh, Q1, uh, jawapan lah Q1 uh, tu apa jawapan dia adalah A Tentulah eh? Based on simbol kat sini Alright, this is example macam mana activity There is a what we call uh, Sometimes uh, preparation untuk online learning juga um, Saya ada mengikuti uh, talk by Prof. Bokman kan uh, Di mana Uh, kita, uh, untuk flip classroom Sebab whatsapp ni pun sesuai untuk flip classroom juga kan uh, yes. Either it's synchronous ataupun asynchronous Kalau synchronous is face to face directly Macam ni lah student ada interact promptly dengan kita Kalau asynchronous pula sebab mana student yang tak ada line ketika tu ke They can when they get the line Dia akan review balik kita punya uh, learning content Alright apa yang saya nampak Ah uh, kalau kita nak move what we call learning process tu lebih smooth dan uh, the objective learning tu boleh successfully tercapai is preferably student to prepare apa yang perlu sebelum kita mulakan kelas. Yeah? Kita prepare. Contoh di sini learning content. Uh, okay. Sebelum tu, sorry. Kalau menggunakan desktop, easy to manage. Kita buka folder and kita Hmm, fix kepada whatsapp uh, display sometimes kadang-kadang outstation kita tak pegang laptop kan kita tak pegang laptop kita boleh create satu group khas untuk kita simpan segala material kita this is one of the ni, uh, tips hmm. eh mana kita create lah material katalah this material for my class here ada dua tiga kelas kita create material dan kita simpan all the material And then uh, untuk detectkan material ini why not kita labelkan dia guna hashtag. And kita labelkan guna Easy hashtag. Easy to find them. Yes because bila kita type chapter 1. Chapter 1 okay this is the material for chapter 1. Kan? Without the T I think. Just chap 1 I think. Uh, C-A-P. Alright this is. And kita can detect. Yeah, uh, easy untuk kita lah. So kita uh -huh. set detect dia. This is example, uh, one of the tips lah sebelum prepare Gunakan WhatsApp So this is example, uh, contoh saya gunakan sebelum nak mulakan kelas I will ask the student watch this video And then guide them apa yang dia perlu ready sebelum attend my class Jadi lebih mudah proses sebab kita faham Perbezaan online dengan face to face The challenge is the way kita nak deliver pada pelajar Supaya pelajar gain the knowledge Kalau face to face from their face Kita boleh tahu dia faham tak faham Dan kita boleh strengthen uh, the, 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 the what part of the learning content yang kita nak strength Tapi kalau untuk online kita Sebab kita kata norma baharu Bukan saja lecturer sahaja perlu ada perubahan Dalam teknik peng, uh, pengajaran Iaitu daripada face to face kepada online student pun kena ready. Student pun kena ready. Dia tak boleh datang ke kelas dalam minda yang kosong. For yeah. this, for this apa what we call uh, class or I need to ready this. Then, probably lecturer boleh deliver content to continuously gain the knowledge related the topic yang kita nak sampaikan. Okay. So, we need to guide the student. 
Don't so in an online flip classroom, this is usually conducted uh, before class. So students yeah. come prepared for class and usually uh, the, the tips would be to, you know, small uh, materials, uh, questions, you know, for yeah. them to activate their mind. And then mm -hmm. some demonstration materials and some questions just to apply so that they come in prepared for their class. Yes, this is yes. another concept of the classroom. Mm. Yes, yeah, this is we can implement actually with um, yes, of course. the apps, uh, WhatsApp or Telegram. A uh, simple. Mm -hmm. Yang penting mm -hmm. our planning. Kalau you dengar mana mana pun related to online learning, planning is the key. Mm -hmm. Make sure you success deliver your learning content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have a question from Rahizam Karim. So he's asking, can we disable any messaging coming from other groups while we are in the class session? Disable from, okay, kat sini lah. Uh, biasanya, kalau dalam WhatsApp, setahu saya, uh, we can control. Sebab yes. since uh, lecturer are the admin, kan? We can control the numbers, uh, the who are our members in the group. Kan? Mm -hmm. Selagi kita tak join members, dia tak boleh... Dia tak boleh what we call um, uh, uh, Selain dia tak join member Dia tak boleh interrupt lah Orang luar tak boleh interrupt Berbeza dengan telegram Betul tak? There is a telegram Yang orang lain boleh join easily Whether you admin ataupun bukan admin uh, Yang ini saya kurang ada pengalaman Tapi based on here We can set a group Katalah uh, Sekejap ya Kita create satu new group Okay from group katalah saya create satu group. I think uh, uh, telah uh, jam 3C. This is the ni. Uh, sekejap. Setting here. Saya lupa. Sepatutnya dia ada bagi tahu dalam setting ni kita akan start as private group ataupun public group. Uh, okay. Ah. Yeah, kita set kat sini private group ataupun public group. Biasanya private group ni dia akan dapat perlu dapat permission daripada admin. Compact tu, public group. Ha, itu yang saya faham through WhatsApp. Ya? Yeah? Alright. Ada lagi? I think maybe what what uh, Rahizam I was asking was, is there a way when you're conducting a class, we disable messaging coming from other groups, disrupting our, you know, as lecturers, so we make sure that other groups do not message. So maybe, uh, yeah. Dekat sini supaya tak timbul ke or what? <laughs> But uh, sini mungkin kita sini perlu mute other groups ke? Okay, macam ni. Uh, satu lagi ciri yang saya boleh share. Uh, alright, bila there is a new message from other group, they will appear on the first line. Betul kan? Dia yeah. akan appear. Dia akan mengganggu. Dia akan dis, uh, dia akan uh, interrupt, uh, interrupt the, the the our our view. Our yeah. view untuk melihat WhatsApp. Uh, maybe we will ask the student untuk kita pinkan dia sebagai the highest. Whether new message masuk daripada other group pun, it will uh -huh. appear on the first line. Example here, uh -huh. you see dia sebagai pin chat. So, dia akan berada di line yang pertama. Any message from other group coming here, dia tak akan berada di bawah ini. Dia akan berada di bawah-bawah. Uh -huh. okay. Itu cara lah kita kontrol. Kalau okay. yang yeah. tak boleh lah nak buat macam yeah. mana. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, but that, that's a very good tip. At least something yeah. beyond our our own control where we can make sure uh, the group is at the top. Yes. Yeah, yes. always at the top. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Kita kita mengajar banyak kelas kan? Dari three class, five class, six class kan? We can susun here, set kan here. Mm. Yeah, pinjam saya easy to detect our classroom. Tak ada lah tercari cari scroll scroll scroll. Oh, this is class. Scroll scroll. Sebab kelas minggu sekali dua jam. Next week nak jumpa lagi. Yes. Alright. Okay. okay. So there's another question. Um, if you are using, you know, uh, this uh, Telegram, for example, to replace our class, how would you keep this recorded? Like, you know, for in, for auditing purposes, what would you suggest, uh, Dr. Rosmina? Okay. Color Telegram, I think. Uh, okay, compact dan Telegram dan WhatsApp. Telegram is more suitable for auditing purposes because, as I mentioned earlier, it is a cloud-based mm -hmm. messaging. We can get getting back because uh, semua maklumat ni tersimpan di cloud. As, mm -hmm. as you say, are you using a same phone number? <laughs> yeah, you are using a same phone number. Kalau you guna nombor telefon yang lain, confirm lah. Tak dapat. Kan? You kena guna telefon yang uh, apa uh, nombor yang sama. Okay, satu lagi uh, kita perlu ingat ya. 
Sesuatu teknologi tu dia takkan selesaikan semua masalah. Ya. Yeah? Contoh, kalau WebEx, you can record for auditing purposes. Betul? Kalau guna video conferencing, you guna e-learning platform macam uh, macam CDOS, you ada record. Tapi macam uh, guna WhatsApp dengan Telegram, because it is a simple communication, ia pun adalah social communication platform actually. Cuma kita menggunakan uh, kelebihan dia dalam PMT. Pertama, of course lah. Kalau nak order team purpose, you kena ada effort simpan lah. You, you apa, what we call, uh, kita snap, foto simpan. Snap, foto simpan. Itu saja yang mampu dibuat. Eh? Because uh, kita kena faham, objective utama this two type of the social, uh, the, 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 the apps ni untuk social. Social ni dia tak simpan maklumat lama-lama. Betul tak? Dia, bila kita borak-borak, dia akan hilang. Ha, ya. Itu saja cara dia. No voice. Okay, so sorry. Uh, so from your point of view, uh, Dr. Rosmina, is this best for synchronous or asynchronous classes? All right. Mm, all right. Mm, it can cover to, to these two types of the learning methodology, synchronous and asynchronous. Yes. Mm. Kalau synchronous, all the student mengadap phone, biasanya dia ada smartphone sajalah kan, laptop tak ada. You can, they can follow the activity. It also can use asynchronous for those students yang cannot attend. Contoh sakit or something lah. Uh, of course lah dalam setiap kelas tu perlu uh, memang akan berlaku ketidakhadiran pelajar kan. Because of sakit ataupun perlu perlu keluar rumah ke untuk buat apa-apa uh, tas yang priority compact dan attend class. Tapi dia kena bagi evidence pada kita. They can refer this WhatsApp group as the asynchronous class. So it's like they can still catch up on the lessons that they have missed, which was actually conducted synchronously. They can still catch up lah if they miss it, right? Okay, that and that will be done as asynchronously. Okay. Yeah, right. betul. Okay. Right. Ada satu soalan, uh, mungkin soalan terakhir sebab kita dah, dah cukup empat dah ni. Bagaimana kita nak pastikan semua pelajar view nota yang diberi melalui telegram? View nota. Okay, uh, how, how, how do you ensure that your students have actually, you know, access our ma the materials that you have shared on Telegram? How, how do you ensure that? Biasanya, uh, dalam Telegram, uh, kalau view nota, saya lupa lah sama ada kita boleh share. Sebab dalam te Telegram ni sebenarnya, there is two time. Uh, yeah, okay, satu, to ensure the, uh, to ensure the student view nota, seperti yang saya kata, our planning. Every material mesti ada activity. Contoh mm. baca, buat, katalah you share two, three slide, then you make it an activity. It's confirm. Tak kisahlah dia tengok nota kita pun ataupun dia gain another knowledge daripada web, uh, apa, daripada Google ke everything. Yang penting our objective nak yes. dia faham what is the learning objective yang kita nak sampaikan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, as what you mentioned, uh, I think Thank you so much actually Dr. Siti Rosmina because you have shared so many uh, valuable tips to our lecturers. I, I think um, the main, uh, the key takeaways I can, I can get from your session just now was to plan, to plan, to plan. As I always say, you can't just wing it when it comes to an online lesson. Also, how you actually manage your materials. Uh, you didn't only use your own laptop uh, to store the materials, but you also you also created a special group called the subject underscore material to put the, the materials so that, you know, let's say you're on the go and you can still share your materials. I, I really... That's a very good idea, okay? Uh, I also uh, was amazed that, uh, you you know, you actually taught uh, lecturers how to uh, minimize the video content, uh, you know, the quality. Tapa quality reduce, but still they get to watch it, okay? So, um, actually, there are so many key takeaways here. So, uh, participants, I, I really hope you all have enjoyed this session. Uh, please, um, uh, what do you call... Uh, Please answer the feedback form because we have given a, a ruang for you to, uh, you know, just tell us what you think, what are your key takeaways from this session. Thank you so much for sh sharing. I think we have covered all the questions. Uh, is there anything uh, that you would want to just cover before a wrap-up? Uh, uh, no, that's all. My okay. turn. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Rosmina. Please hang on there. I have some announcements to make. Uh, okay. okay, so for tomorrow's uh, session, uh, on the 17th of June, we will start at 10 a.m. And the slot would be uh, aspect pengurusan masa sewaktu pelaksanaan PDP dalam talian. 
Okay, uh, penceramai lapan Zaitun dari uh, Politeknik Mersing Johor. Uh, slot kedua pada pukul sebelas tengah uh, ialah uh, bagaimana meng, uh, mengekalkan motivasi kesihatan dan kesejahteraan pelajar dan pencara sewaktu PDP dalam talian oleh Puan Saidatul Saria dari KK Jasin dan uh, slot pada waktu petang ialah tips menjaga kesihatan mental sewaktu pelaksanaan PDP dalam talian penceramah Dr Azmawati dari Universiti Malaya. So besok tema dia ialah kesejahteraan the well being of us when we're conducting uh, fully uh, online classes. Okay so um we we'll hope to see you all uh, tomorrow morning uh, and uh, thank you for joining us. I think many of you all joined us from the morning to the afternoon. I appreciate everyone's attendance here. So thank you again from BIPD, uh, Dr. Situ Rosmina. See you around. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.